Hello, and welcome to the Hawker Systems video series for SOLIDWORKS Composer. This is part five of five for the top five things you need to know to be successful in SOLIDWORKS Composer. So this video five is going to cover publishing out content. Uh, the previous video went over properties, and uh, videos before that went over uh, actually moving things, creating 2D elements, and uh, creating views. So with all of these skills compiled into one, we would get a document such as I have open on the screen right now. I have views with 2D elements and uh, different items uh, that go through in a sequential order. And now we want to go ahead and publish these out, right? So what we would do uh, is a few different ways to publish, a few different outcomes. The first one is if you go to workshops, high resolution image, you choose your resolution of your image and we would want to go and do multiple views and this is going to save out an image of all the views here so i'm going to go ahead and say save as and let's go ahead and put this into a directory we'll call this uh we'll call this images and we're going to go ahead and dump them all in there as jpegs and now if i navigate to that folder we'll see that composer creates a jpeg of every one of these uh, just like we have in the view now that we have images, we can bring this into a Word doc, you know, maybe InDesign, something to do like that where you can compile it into some step-by-step -step procedural um, you know, material. Uh, or we could even reference this with a website and, uh, and um, have this displayed on the web. Now, the benefit of outputting images is these images are still linked to Composer. So when I go to output these, if I change them, output them again, these images update. Anything linking to these images is then also going to update. So it makes it very clean uh, when modifying in SOLIDWORKS, modifying in Composer, and then modifying the end deliverables in this kind of static output method. Uh, the second one I want to show here is actually creating navigational buttons and saving these out as a player file. So we'll see down here in the first view, there is some navigational controls. So if I were to select these, um, first off, you know what, I'm going to remove these I uh, want to show how to actually create these, right? So we can, you guys can do it on your own. If I go to Author, I go to Image 2D, there is an option here for all buttons. I'm going to go ahead and drop all the buttons down here at the bottom. I want to go and resize these buttons. So if I go to where it says Width, right here it's 12. Let's say I make this, I don't know, 30. They're going to resize, but you can see that they're actually um, flowing into each other. In the Author tab under Magnet, if I do a horizontal line, I can take this, snap it down to the bottom, grab those guys, maybe stretch it out a little bit, and uh, update that view. Now, these buttons are going to be linked to the views, so if I hit next, it will go to the next view. Previous will go to the previous, last, and first. And that's going to be in the player. But now I need these buttons to be in the rest of the views, so I select them, shift select all the views, hit this button right here for update views with selected actors. That's going to push those buttons to all of the views, now any view we go to will have these navigational buttons. And now I can go ahead and I can save this out as a interactive document. So I'm going to go ahead and say file, save as package. And I want to save this, I will just go ahead and put this in the same folder here. It's uh, writing out the document. It's going to be a exe file with a player built right in, meaning that you can send this file to anybody that's using a PC and they'll be able to play without installing anything on their computer. Here's the exe. If I open it up, we can go ahead and see how we can use this um, on the shop floor. We can send it out to our customers. It's a very easy way to view interactive material um, without having anything special installed. Okay, navigational buttons. I can go through every step of the process here that I have predefined. And if I go back to the beginning, I want to show this, where actually I have an animation set up. Um, we can go here and we can turn the wheels. And it's just kind of a, some fun settings you can do in the animation mode in Composer. So uh, that really you know, leads into one of my next videos that I'm going to be doing in a couple weeks here about animation in Composer. So stay tuned and check that one out. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope that this uh, five-part video series is helpful. Again, if you take all the elements from these five videos, combine them together, you're sure to create something and get you started with Composer.